Welcome to the Playground Podcast. Today, I am joined by the fabulous Dina Bottin. If you don't know who she is, then where have you been? Fantastic TV <laughs> presenter. She's been around in Dubai for a long time. I'm sure you're going to recognize her face. And a huge mommy influencer, dare I say. Influencer. Ooh, nice intro. Thanks, Thanks. Uh, I freestyled that one just for you, Dina. Thanks. I appreciate it. It was very well done. Very natural and very, uh, I don't know, made me feel good. It was a good way to start my day. Mm, good, good. Dina. Dina, 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 where do I start with you? Oh, wherever you want. Okay. You can ask me anything. I love that. I, I might get... regret this later, but yeah. <laughs> you can ask me anything. I always get rules. <laughs> I'm going to start off by, I really want to speak about your content creation journey. Sure. Okay. Because you were on TV, very traditional media. Right. What you guys don't understand is because I'm in PR and Dina is in media, this is even going to be more interesting. Like it's, it's. And we've been around for a long time in these industries. Yes. So TV, you went from TV and then you became a content creator. What happened? Well, I met my husband at TV, at the TV station. <laughs> and we were both on different shows. I met him immediately, fell in love with him. And a year later, uh, we were married and we were trying to get pregnant for quite a while. A week after finding out we were finally pregnant, all of our shows shut down. All local productions shut down at the TV station. Mm. And yes, it was kind of shock, <laughs> especially God, when you anxiety. both work for the same company. Serious anxiety. And I had, you know, fought so hard and so long to get to the position where I felt like we were stable and the life that I had been dreaming of had been built. And we were, I don't know, everything was just consistent and stable. I think every parent's dream. And then, yes, I lost my job. And I just, I always say, I kept thinking, who in the world is going to hire me now? So uh, I was quite depressed for a while. Um, and at the time, I remember it was blogs and very Pinterest-like photos that were popular. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, my background's videos. I know how to film and edit videos. So I started making videos while I was pregnant. No one was really interested in that at the time. Mm -hmm. But I think I sent over 100 emails to companies before I finally heard back from somebody. I think it was Baby Shop was my first ever client. And Thank that's you, Baby how Shop. My, thank you, Baby Shop. And that's how my content creation journey began. It I was paid peanuts. I worked like crazy, but I really wanted to um, build some sort of reel. Yeah. Uh, you know, highlight reel of what I could do. And what in that year time, was that? Sorry to interrupt. Ooh, so that was 2015. Okay. Yes. So there's <clears throat> that side, which mm -hmm. that's the more polished version of what you see. The, <laughs> the behind the scenes version was I eventually, you know, gave birth. Um, I was doing a series for Mom's World and there were some crazy things that happened while I was on set with my child. I mean, there's so many discussions we could have here, which is going back to work after being a mother, um, having your child with you on set, how amazing that is, but also, you know, breastfeeding on set, having my baby vomit all over my outfit and still oh having to God. continue filming. Uh, yeah, there was, it was interesting times, you know, best and hardest. So I feel that a lot of people, and I mean, before I had kids, I would look at you and say, how is Dina doing all of this? Like all the time, I'd be like, oh my God, how does she have all this energy? Now that I have kids and two kids, how on earth do you do it, Dina? Which part? Do what? Do everything. How do you film? Because filming and creating content is a full-time job. And then like, there's times like mm. when huge events happen and you're part of them, like heavily part of them. How do you juggle everything? So I feel like I talk a lot this talk about this a lot on Instagram, but it's funny. People want you to be open and transparent, but I feel like it's never what gets the biggest response, if that makes sense. Um, so honestly, I deal with a lot of anxiety, which I think people would be surprised to know. I put a lot, a lot of pressure on myself, um, but I am also somebody who's genuinely excited about life. I'm genuinely excited every day to wake up. And because, uh, <laughs> let's say I get very excited and hyper, I was like, let's do this and let's do that. And, da -da 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 -da, and I want to do everything at the same time. So on a regular basis, on most weeks, I am TV presenting, doing voiceovers. Sometimes um, I'm seeing. Um, and then obviously the content creation. I'd say out of all of those, I probably find the content creation to be the most stressful. And I don't do it all because we've discussed this before. Everyone's always like, how does, how do moms, how do they do it all? Like working mothers. And 
we don't balance, right? One day you're better at being a mother and the next day you're better at being a presenter, but something always has to compromise. Your head can't be in the same place every single day. So what I try to do is achieve some sort of balance over the week. I am quite organized. I wish I was more organized though. I mean, I woke up yesterday and I was like, I haven't posted in four days. And the worst thing, I think you'll know this, the worst time to create content for your social media is because you have to. Yeah. <laughs> it's like on yeah. the day. And I'm like, I need to be funny. How can I be funny? Um, so I do struggle with that, the consistency and demands of social media because I am doing so much and because, well, my kids are off school right now. So I'm trying to focus on them and they're feeling very needy and there's a lot happening at home and mm -hmm. it's tough. It's not easy. So it's not. I talk about that a lot, but I feel like people are always like, you're always just having such a good yeah. time. And I'm, in my stories, I'm like, serious anxiety, had a panic attack today. <laughs> I know, but by the way, some people don't see stories, right? So for me, when I look at your reels, I'm like, ah, she's so funny. How does she have time to think of this? Like all your reels are so on point and every mom can relate to them. Like I you remember know, like- the, the laugh so you don't cry, right? <laughs> like, last, the last one you did the, in Ramadan, which really hit home with me is, five minutes before iftar i can't even remember that right okay, now anyway, which one guys please look at dina's content it is hilarious and every woman and mom can relate to it but thanks Shamim. um so you come up with all your own ideas right i do i mean obviously sometimes i'm inspired or i jump on a trend okay. but yes um and i have a fantastic crew at home that comprises of my mother my father my <laughs> husband <laughs> And my amazing nanny, Norma. <laughs> Production team right there. Al Booty so, team. Yeah, sometimes the kids even get in on it. Yeah, sometimes they're Speaking even filming. Speaking of kids, you know what I'm going to ask, right? I have a feeling that question was coming. Okay, so I'm, you know, as someone who's in similar worlds, mm. I am, my kids are not on my social media. Not yet, anyway. Mm -hmm. And it's a decision that every parent has to make. Now, your kids have been there from day one. Or yes, they, they have. Yeah? Okay, so what are your thoughts? I want to get your thoughts on this because I know that often a lot oh. of parents may criticize influencers for doing it. So I would say that there is no right answer and anyone who says there's a right answer is wrong because this is the first time we're the first people, we're the experiment mm -hmm. in a number of years. My children may love me or hate me to, <laughs> based on whatever uh, decision I've made on their behalf. So I would say with my husband and I was a bit different because we we're both already in the spotlight mm -hmm. and is our jobs. And at the time I had no help, no nanny and I had no job. Um, so it was either, I, I just didn't know how to go about having a job without my kids being involved. And it was the best way that I could think of them being involved. And I don't regret it for a second. However, if you're somebody who's really cautious, you're not necessarily this isn't an, a priority for you. Um, even if it is, I have rules for you, but you know, there is a lot of talk about identity theft. Um, mm -hmm. People hearing your children's voice, um, their interests, their appearances, and all of that being stolen. And obviously your kids are growing up, but I don't know what the future holds and what Google's going to be like. I think one of a few rules that most parents should adhere to is, you know, absolutely no nudity. Um, that's really important to me. So even when the kids were really young, um, I never allowed my children to be naked, mm -hmm. um, no matter how cute they were sometimes. Mm -hmm. Um, I never discuss where we live, mm -hmm. uh, which school they go to. Mm -hmm. I, um, there's very few activities that people know where we are and when we are, to be honest, even our full last names and our full names are, no one knows. No mm -hmm. one knows what that was. And and I, for a really long time, when the kids were young and I couldn't explain to them that we were on social media, I used to, they, the boys only ever went by mush and smush. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times people would be like, mushy, smushy. And my boys don't actually respond to that. I think people would be shocked to know that, even though I constantly call them my mushes online. And it was because I didn't want people to see them and call them by their name in a very familiar way and then yeah. think that they know that person. Yeah. So there was a few things that I did, some of which I've talked about right now and some that I haven't, um, to protect and create some barriers. But I think those are incredibly important. On the flip side, if you are choosing to put your children, you know, on screen, online, the future is only heading in that direction. In one way, um, you could be optimistic and be like, hey, we're preparing our kids for the future. I mm -hmm. don't think my kids are ever going to be fascinated by social media because they grew up around it. They understand mm -hmm. it. They understand the work that goes behind it. And they know that it's not some like, ooh, thrilling 
incredible yeah. lifestyle. Like they're not blind. They're not going to be fooled by any of that. Um, I so like they, that. Yeah. So I think in a way I like that they know how to present themselves. I know, like that they know how to talk to camera, that they have that confidence. And also because I talk to them a lot about, you know, stranger danger and <laughs> what it means to communicate with people, how you know them, how you don't, passwords, code words, all that stuff. I love that. There's, you got to do your homework. So there is no right or wrong decision. There's only the decisions you make for yourself. And it's an incredibly personal one. So my next question is, after you had a baby or you had two, two kids, you are in the spotlight, meaning cameras, action. How did you deal with the weight loss? Because I know that's something I'm struggling with. I mean, I still have another 10 kilos to go. Ooh. But as moms, it's a lot of pressure, right? And when did you have the time to exercise? I mean, I remember watching your videos, but... How did you manage? So, you know, uh, a couple of years after I had my second son, I was re-watching this interview I did with James Hetfield from Metallica. and Just casually. Just yeah. casually. <laughs> I love that guy, right? And I love Metallica growing up. But I, and I was reading the comments and the top comment that was most liked was something along the lines of, man, this this girl used to be such a hottie. I just went to her Instagram. You should see her now. And it was some sort of emoticon of like a puking face or like a, like a really like, oh, are so mean. <laughs> you know, they're like, they're probably 13 years old, whatever. Yes. Online bullies, not the best. Um, and it came at a time that I was really struggling with weight loss. And I don't even think it's about so much the weight as it is that you want to, you already don't feel like yourself and you want to look like yourself. So it's a double whammy and it's, so and it's heartbreaking and you're sleep deprived and you have absolutely no routine and all you want in your life is to feel good about yourself Yeah. Um, and in control. I think a lot of it for me was feeling in control. So I struggled the first time around, I was able to bounce back. But the second time around, it took me about two and a half years of trying, by the way, not just hanging around. Mm -hmm. I did all the same things that I did the first time around, but it just didn't work as effectively. I'm constantly gaining weight and losing weight. I'm not somebody who is naturally thin. I was quite overweight growing up. So I always struggle. Again, I have control issues in the sense that I think everyone has a bit of control issues where I always want to be exactly in my range mm -hmm. and not lose control and not suddenly become, you know, high school Dina or whatever Dina. I'm struggling with that right now because even though I think I look great, I'm like, oh, I gained a few kilos. You and look amazing, I hate, Dina. Thank you. And you know what? I, I feel really good about myself right now, but I think we all have a bit of body dysmorphia mm -hmm. because I work a job where I'm on screen and on stage and a lot of people are, you know, fixated on my appearance, even when I'm not. And I have a stylist who brings me clothes that are a certain size and makes comments. And it's, it's really hard, even when I want to be, see, I hate that I'm saying this. <laughs> I hate that I'm saying this on a podcast because I wish I could be like, you just got to embrace your body and you do, and you got to love your body. You got to be yeah. so thankful but the reality is, is that we all do struggle, whether we talk about it or not. Um, I think this year, though, especially with everything that's been going on with Palestine, um, I really have an appreciation for the fact that for my health and for the fact that I have, you know, all my body parts mm -hmm. and that I am healthy and able to run around and take care of my children. So I think that has really done a lot of good for my mental health mm -hmm. and, and acceptance. Yeah, I think it's been a wake up call what's happening around yeah. us, Palestine. And obviously for me, it's very close to home, Sudan, and it's been crazy. So I think absolutely. you're absolutely like right. Millions of people starving and we're like, oh, you know, fretting over what we should eat. Oh, Zempek or Manjaro? Yeah. Like, which one should I, by the way, for real, that's one, used to be one of my, oh, at least I guess some days I do think about it. Oh, Zempek yeah. or Manjaro, which one should I take? And then you kind of. Get Look, on, on most day. days I wake up and I'm just so unbelievably thankful. But another day, like the other day I woke up and weighed myself and I'm like, oh, why am I four kilos above my, yeah. you know, my, my, my range? Because I'm like, what if four kilos turns into 10, turns into yeah. 14 and then suddenly I can't, you know. But see, looking from the outside, that Dina, you can't tell that you have any of these struggles at all. And I feel like Thanks. it's such a wake up call to a lot of moms. Guys, we are all on the same boat. Like, Okay, so I read something recently 
or saw something recently and it just blew my mind, which is me. take your, inse- if, if you want to set your insecurities free, share them with the world. And that is something that I do all the time. And I've spoken about this before, which is I have, I have extensions in my hair right now and I have quite thin hair and I never really wanted to joke about it so much because I actually was worried that people would make fun of my hair. And I'm like, that's something that's like a really sensitive subject for me. And I did this. I don't know if you ever saw my mom, my mom bun video where I took out my yeah. mom bun and my hair was just standing yeah. straight up like yeah. a troll. And I was sitting Loved there it. looking at this video and I was like, I was like, oh, I think this is a funny video. And I feel like a lot of moms are going to relate to this. But do I really want to like set this free to the world? I have the same thing. I have a mom bun and it stands when, yeah. Yeah, but yeah. you know, my hair is quite thin. So can I, can I actually keep my hair? So anyway, I posted, I did decide to post this video. And I've never had a video that's been shared as widely as that one has. I mean, I had people all over the world in Australia and Canada and the U.S. I'll be like, I had a friend send this to me. I can't believe it, Dina. Your video is like being shared all over WhatsApp. And I was so happy. And I I really do try to do that because I'm like, if you can laugh about, you know, how you feel your anxiety and your thin hair and new wrinkles and turning 40 and all that stuff. And then you don't have to be insecure because you've already kind of shared that with the world. (laughs) You have set it free, set your insecurities free, people. It's, It's been a game changer for me. And I think... Six, the most successful content in, in the world is the one that's the most relatable, right? Mm-hmm. So it's putting yourself sometimes out there, I got to right? dig deep. <laughs> the mommy bun was a hit. I definitely sent it to my husband because he always makes fun of me. I remember last, a couple of episodes ago, I came with a beautiful bun and like my hair slicked back and they're like, your hair looks amazing. I'm like, it's dirty. That's why it looks <laughs> it like it. slicks back it's all like, that grease. Yeah. So Dina. A lot of moms and content creators see your stuff and they love it because, I mean, the back to school one when after the storm, I literally saw that and I could relate with every part of my body, like of you, the kids are walking away and you're sweeping and you just, you know, how many people message me said, what did you do? Did you use a filter? I'm like, no, I just didn't have makeup on. They're like, but you put black all over us. I was like, I was really exhausted that day. It was real. Talk about sharing your insecurities. So that's, that's what I love. So if you were to tell me top tips for content creators and mommy influencers Mm -hmm. trying to get into the game, make money Mm. with brands. I think number one is the one that's shared most widely, which is authenticity. Mm -hmm. I think you really have to be yourself. And if I think when people used to ask me for advice on being on camera, I said the hardest thing you can do, the, the hardest thing you can do on camera is be yourself. People are like, what do I do with my hands? How do I, where do I look? Where do I, and you have to spend time really getting to know yourself and finding a way to be your most natural on camera and then spend a lot of time with yourself. Notice, take note of things that you do that are ridiculous that people might relate to or funny things, funny stories that you've had. And I'm constantly sitting there reflecting and being like, what's been bugging me lately? What's been funny to me lately? What am I going through? Which is part of the reason I started talking about past time, by the way, in a million years that I think people would resonate with that. But yeah, be yourself. Number one, mm-hmm. for sure. Should That's I continue? Support. Yeah, if you have any more. <laughs> Um, I think be very, very realistic about how tiring and how much work being a content creator actually is Mm -hmm. because people are always like, oh, you, you know, you, um, rose to fame so quickly, or you got so many followers to me. I'm like, got so many followers so quickly. I'm like, I've been doing this for 15 years. Yes. Mm -hmm. I have 50,000 followers. That's amazing. But I'm on TV. I've been on radio. I'm doing like a million things on stage is 50,000, a crazy amount for, for 15 years. If I told you right now, start content creating. And in 15 years, you'll have 50,000 followers and do this work every single day. Would you do it? Think about that. So in the beginning, it used to take me, take me quite a while to edit. So I remember some of the first campaigns that I did, I spent um, like six hours filming, let's say, and six hours editing to get wow. a one minute video that I was very happy with. That's how long it used to take me. Obviously now it doesn't take me as long, but are you willing to do that? Are you willing to spend that time and energy and the patience to actually be successful? Mm-hmm. So be realistic with yourself about be that. Be realistic. Um, I think from my side, I would say one thing about you is that, yes, you're very goofy, but I feel like you don't over criticize yourself, maybe, because that's how it comes across. Like if you're hard on yourself, you won't be able to put out the content 
that is funny that every mom like is struggling with dirty hair and the mom you bun but but I am hard on myself I think it depends on the video that I'm doing okay um when you're on tv there's a you know there's a lot of people commenting on how you look and it was very hard for me to get on television because a lot of people there in the production side of things didn't think I was attractive enough I wasn't thin enough I was you still to so get a nose job Dina. but I was given a lot a lot of feedback and I still am on quite a consistent basis you know um and so I can be quite critical of how I look but I think it depends on the mood so obviously when I'm going on stage I want to look my best and feel my best but when I'm I'm just trying to be really realistic and honest here I know that it's not necessarily the answer that no, you're looking I want, for I want but, Dina honest but I Dina. think I think I am very critical of myself and I think I'm very hard on myself and I have insane expectations of how productive I should be every day I really struggle with that I have my to-do lists and I try now to remove 30% of it because I know that even having removed 30% that's still a really ambitious to-do list but every day I wake up and I'm like and I'm hard on myself at the end of the day. I'm like, you should have worked out. You know, health is really important. You're high risk for breast cancer. Work out. You need to be lean as well because, you know, health and susceptibility to all that. And then, um, you know, what did you do for your social media? You want to grow, but you're not working enough. And I see all these other content creations. I mean, was that quote? Comparison is a thief of joy. My goodness, is that true? Comparison is the thief yeah. of joy. You compare yourself to other people and then I'll be like, at these content creators, they post every day. I can barely post twice or three times a week and they're so funny. How are they so funny all the time? So I, I think I am really hard on myself and I try not to be, but I'll tell you the moments that I am able to make those goofy videos and I'm in the right mood. My God, that is the job that I love. And I wish I could be in that mood and film that and capture those moments but sometimes I make reels and I think they're funny in my head and I'll film it and film it and edit and edit it and they never go up because for whatever reason, <laughs> I haven't been able to capture that humor. So, so interesting. Um, fun fact, guys, for the PR people and brand people watching me, Dina is one of the best and easiest influencers to work with. And I'm not saying this because she's sitting right here. This is a conversation Stop. we had in our office last week and someone said, I was looking at a campaign not knowing, these people don't know I know Dina. They're like, by the way, Dina Butch is fantastic to work with. Oh, like, So professional, so easy to work with. So there, speaking of brands, as a mom, how long have you been a mom for now? Nine years. Oh, it's a long time. It is. Um, it gets so better, by the way. I never it? wanted them to grow up. Oh, my and God. My husband was like, what are you talking about? They're going to grow up. And I'm like, and we'll watch movies together. We'll play games and we'll go do activities. We both actually like, and it is fantastic. It's a whole new world. Oh, my God. The I problem is, is they're going to be so cool so soon that they're not going to even want to hang out with us. But right now... I'm loving this six years old and nine years old. I think I'm in the oh in a really God. good stage. I can't it's wait. coming. It's coming. <laughs> Just wait. I'm at the four and it's hard. Yeah. Yeah. Baby, baby and four. Four is not an easy one either. Yeah. 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 We're full of attitude. But mama journey, right? Yep. There's so many brands getting thrown at us. For all the new moms or expecting moms, what are the brands that kind of stuck in your mind over the last nine years that helped you? So I loved Baby Shop and I swear it was before they started working with me just because I find that the UAE is so expensive yeah. and Baby Shop remains really great value for money. Okay. So I absolutely love them um, okay. and they're everywhere. I would say no matter how many strollers I've tried, the Yo-Yo Zen. Oh, Yo-Yo so Zen. Good. Can you believe the I don't have one, but I always talk about it. I don't know how. So I think... I, because we obviously sample and I've worked with some fantastic, I mean, Up a Baby is great. I've, I've worked with a lot of different yeah. brands and I genuinely love the strollers. But at the end of the day, if I had to choose one, the Yo-Yo Zen is hands down out of all of them, my favorite. Just a great combination of being compact and durable. And When I was pregnant, somebody said to me, buy it. And I said, uh, uh, uh. And then I, and they're like, Shamim, if you don't buy it now, you will buy it. Trust me, just buy it now. We ended up buying the Upper Baby Vista, yeah. which I absolutely love and it's super stylish. But yeah. No, and they've got a great basket underneath. That collapses the thing. really and I miss nicely. Clutter. Like <laughs> it's great when you travel. Not great for the overhead, but yeah. You know. Lastly, I would say 
KCAL. I know that's bizarre, really? but I really, really loved KCAL as a meal plan just because it was so easy. The app is so easy to switch in meals. And I know that's not necessarily for your kids, but if you're looking to get healthy and get back into shape very slowly, there's just so much variety. I don't know. For me, KCAL's a winner. So must haves for mommies who are going back to the workplace. A really good attitude. And let's go into the... <laughs> Let's go into the attitude. I think there's a lot of guilt that we deal with when we yeah. go back to work. But can I just tell all of you watching who are like feeling guilty about leaving your kids? I find that I am such a much, much better mother when I have filled my own cup. I've done something just for myself. I've gotten a chance to miss them, get a break, remember who I am. I come back motivated. I want to grow. I want I want my kids to grow up remembering that I did something for myself and had a job that I was passionate about and that I'm independent. And when they grow up and leave my house, which I'm devastated about from now, I want them to know that I still have something that is my own that I have built from scratch and that I can still work on and focus on. So remember all that when you're feeling the guilt and involve your children in your work. I bring my kids in, they're bored to pieces when they watch me on TV or they listen to me do a voiceover or see me do an edit, but they really do have a newfound appreciation as they get older for the work that you do when they can understand it better. Is there anything else you want to include? What is next for me? What's next for Dina? <laughs> What is next for me? <laughs> That's a really good cast question. A question I ask myself all the time. Should maybe, you and I should have coffee, maybe yeah. have some ideas. Yeah. You know what? I'm always brainstorming and trying to think of like, what's next? This, that. And, yeah. But I, I am very thankful that I have so many different jobs and they all have kept me mm -hmm. interested. So I still love doing television. I love emceeing. I love, I love doing voiceovers um, love and doing content. Voiceovers. I love doing voiceovers. You want to hear that? Yeah, I do. This actually. summer. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. Can you do one for the Playground podcast? Listen into the Playground podcast. Well, like, do you the want a girl? Parenting hood. Do you want a girl next door or like, or a sultry or? Oh my God. What um, you whatever you feel, whatever comes to you. It's a play. There's no hood like I the parenthood, the Playground podcast. There's no hood like parenthood. Catch the Playground podcast with Dina Butti. Oh my God. It's like a different person. Mm. So good. Well, sometimes you're like the girl next door and, you know, come shopping. And sometimes it's documentary. Yeah, I can do this thing where you give me a sentence and I'll do like eight How different voices. How do people <laughs> find you for that stuff, for like voice recording? They call me or WhatsApp me or message me on my Instagram. I often do it through um, studios and stuff too. Mm. Um, and I actually have a voiceover studio set up at home. Oh, that was okay. one of the beauties of COVID, by the way, having that independence and building everything yourself so that you can work from home because I've maintained that since. So thank you, COVID. It was the only nice thing you gave us. Yeah, I think a lot came out of COVID. A lot of babies as well. Yeah. <laughs> Including mine. <laughs> yeah, not me. <laughs> It's not that mood in our house. Um, so thank you, Dina. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Honestly, it's You've been, been awesome. Yeah, it's been awesome. And I loved you opening up. Like, I think a lot of moms are going to relate to this. And I know. I feel like I've been interrupting myself and being like, blah, 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 blah. but no. yes, hopefully there is nuggets of inspiration no. or information in there something. absolutely absolutely thank you thanks guys tune in subscribe share and we'll see you on our next episode